Welcome back, science fans. Today, we're exploring a chilling question. Just how much can the human body take when faced with the obliterating power of a nuclear explosion? We'll dive into three terrifying scenarios, from the instant vaporization of those closest to the blast to the creeping horror of radiation sickness, we'll uncover the realities of nuclear warfare. Brace yourself for a journey to the edge of human endurance as we ask, how much can you take? If you're one mile away or less from ground zero, the chances of survival are extremely low. In most cases, anyone within this radius will be instantly vaporized by the heat and pressure of the fireball, which can reach the same temperatures as in the middle of the sun. Even if you're behind a wall or inside a building, the likelihood of being killed by the initial blast is extremely high. However, let's assume that by some miracle, you're able to avoid being vaporized or crushed by the initial blast. In this case, you'll still be exposed to an extremely high dose of initial nuclear radiation. The intense burst of gamma rays and neutrons released by the detonation will cause acute radiation sickness and is fatal within days. At this level of exposure, you'll likely experience severe nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea within minutes to hours after the blast. You'll also suffer from severe fever, and your heart will begin to beat rapidly, a condition known as tachycardia. As the radiation tears through your body's cells and tissues, your hair will start to fall out, and you will begin to bleed from your nose, gums, and other orifices. The damage will be irreversible and your organs will begin to fail. So even if you receive immediate medical attention, your chances of survival are slim to none. The psychological impact of being this close to the detonation is difficult to imagine. If you somehow survive the initial blast and pulse of radiation, witnessing the destruction would scar you for life, both physically and mentally. Just a quick note, if you're not a subscriber, please slam that subscribe button. This is a small channel, so every new subscriber helps. Thanks, and now, back to Ground Zero. At three miles away, the initial blast from a one megaton bomb is still very powerful. Even at this distance, the levels of gamma rays and neutrons are still strong enough to cause radiation sickness if you're outside. So what does this feel like? Soon you'll begin to feel severely disoriented and have uncontrollable seizures. These symptoms come from the neurological damage caused by the radiation tearing through your cells. Outside, extremely high amounts of radioactive fallout will begin raining down. The fallout is made up of the debris that was sucked up into the fireball and these particles begin to fall back down within minutes after the blast. The heavier particles will reach the ground within a few minutes and will settle on your skin and clothing. You won't feel anything right away, but this dust is poison and it's already beginning to damage you at the cellular level. Soon you may start to experience a burning sensation or itching, similar to a sunburn. This is a sign that the radiation is damaging the cells in your skin and you will develop painful blisters or open sores. Vomiting and diarrhea follows as your digestive system isn't able to work because it's extremely inflamed. The radiation will also weaken your immune system by damaging your white blood cells and bone marrow. This leaves you open to more infections in the coming weeks and months. You'll begin to notice your hair falling out in clumps as the radiation damages the rapidly dividing cells in your hair follicles. Get inside immediately because the longer you're outside, the worse your symptoms will become. Without immediate decontamination, the damage from the fallout is irreversible and fatal. Even on the lower end of the spectrum, the pain and suffering will be excruciating, and the long-term effects, such as an increased risk of cancer, will haunt you for years to come. No, folks, it's not a fun way to die. If the unthinkable ever happens, your only hope is to seek shelter immediately after the blast. Stay inside for at least three days to allow the most dangerous fallout particles to decay. If the particles touched you, remove your outer clothing and seal it in a plastic bag. Wash your skin and hair thoroughly with soap and water and pay special attention to areas that were exposed to the particles. And of course, don't eat or drink anything that may have been contaminated by fallout even if you're starving. It will kill you. At this range, the nuclear radiation from the blast 
is less intense than if you were closer. However, dangerous levels of radiation will still be all around you. The amount you would be exposed to depends on several things, including the height of the blast, weather conditions, and if you're in the fallout path, if you're downwind of the detonation, you're more likely to receive a higher dose and symptoms will appear within days. At lower doses, these may be mild and flu-like, including nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. At higher doses, symptoms can be more severe, including bloody diarrhea, fever, and hair loss. Future generations will not escape unscathed either. Studies of survivors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki have shown increased rates of cancer, not only among those directly exposed, but also in their children and grandchildren. This shows us that genetic damage caused by radiation can be passed down for generations. The scenarios we've explored today paint a grim picture of the devastating power of nuclear weapons. From the instant annihilation of those closest to the blast to the lingering effects of radiation exposure miles away, the consequences of a nuclear detonation are truly horrifying. There are no winners in a nuclear conflict. The only way to prevent this is to ensure that these weapons are never used again. It's up to all of us to support efforts towards nuclear disarmament and to work towards a world free from the threat of nuclear annihilation. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.